Hello guys, Oscar Hotel 8, Sierra Tango November here from Survival Tech Nord. You know, almost every time I'm out portable and I make a video and show that to you with a solar panel, there's something that's always there that almost never gets a mention. Can you imagine for a second what that might actually be? If you said charge controllers, then you are absolutely right. Today we're going to talk about the Guinnesson series of lithium iron phosphate charge controllers and why they're the best choice for MAM portable off-grid communications and off-grid power. So stick with me a while and I'll tell you all about it. You are listening to the emergency broadcast systems. This station broadcasts emergency news and official information on the air for a sign area. We've seen our fair share of dubious manufacturers stretching the truth about their products on this channel. And although I've known all along this is the right solar charge controller to recommend for our lithium iron phosphate battery packs, I've been cautious about doing that without doing some long-term testing. Under normal circumstances, radio operators have only the word of the manufacturer to provide the truth about the product or the quality of the product and where it's manufactured. That's why I always tell you to start with the product's documentation. If the documentation is crap, I can assure you 99% of the time, the innards of that product are crap as well. Certainly there are some exceptions, but why would you risk it to save 5, 10 or 15 bucks? Regardless of the charge controller you're buying, the manufacturer should be able to answer the questions up on the screen. So usually by the time you see something on the channel, I've had it at least some months, perhaps half a year or a year, and in this case we're approaching a year. I've tested the 5 and 10 amp lithium versions of the Guinness on charge controllers in the bitter cold and the heat of summer. They've had to contend with condensation and being beaten around on my way to my next operating location. I haven't had one fail yet. Those of you who've been around the channel for a while know that I'm a weak signal digital mode operator. So I demand silence from my receiver and the electronics I use out in the field. This means the charge controller has to be RF quiet. And a lack of noise might make the difference between the message you hear and the message you don't hear. And honestly speaking, that could save a life. Now most of you already know my QRO setup for field communications is the Yaesu FT891. What's usually just out of sight of the FT891 is the Guinnesson GV10 Lithium for lithium iron phosphate batteries. And the GV10 lithium is either connected to my 120 watt power film or my two smaller 20 watt power film panels. By now it should be apparent that this isn't my first rodeo. What you're looking at is my Morningstar Sunsaver 6 and an AGM battery. This is what I was using for field communications before I found the lithium iron phosphates and the Guinness on controllers. Now this Morningstar controller isn't bad. They've even designed in a modification allowing you to reduce the noise it produces. But that isn't even the biggest problem. The bigger problem is most operators don't even realize they have noise in their receivers because the noise floor they deal with every day is already high. It's not until they get out into the field and away from the noise sources that they realize their charge controller was one of them. And that's one of the reasons I made the transition over to Guinness on charge controllers. Nobody gave them to me for free. Nobody paid me to say they're good or they're not good or whatever. They're just the best choice for the job. Sometimes I wonder if other bloggers and YouTubers think it's their job to promote products rather than test them and tell you the findings. Honestly, it's a thankless job, but I have to tell you something. It's incredibly rewarding to know that you spent the time and did the research and testing to find out if this is the right thing to promote or not. Unfortunately for the Guinness on charge controllers, whatever we throw at the power film solar panels, 
the Guinness on Charge controllers need to handle as well. Now so far I'm already a year down the road with my testing and I haven't found any issues with them yet. I don't have a lot of test equipment for testing lux or solar energy or things like that. But what I do know is when my panels are producing power, how much power, and if they're not. With that said, some of you may remember I have some monocrystalline panels up on the tower. Those are connected to a PWM charge controller in the shack. The tower panels and the PWM charge controller are my benchmark. One doesn't need to be a physicist to understand on my test rig, the amorphous panels with the Guinness on charge controller start charging earlier with the sun lower in the sky than my monocrystalline panels. That's important to know when choosing panels and charge controllers for the field. I contribute this to the low light capabilities of the amorphous solar panels and the maximum power point tracking of the Guinness on charge controllers. We should also remember I'm at 65 degrees north, and sometime in my videos I'm even at 66 or 67 degrees north. There isn't a whole lot of light up here, but the combination is working. I try to think about it this way. A manufacturer can write whatever they want on a package, but rebadging that Alibaba charge controller with an American wrapper isn't going to make it any better. Spend that 10 or 15 extra bucks and get some quality. Guinness on charge controllers can be found in some pretty amazing places like boats or racing yachts and high altitude balloons, never mind my solar powered field station. It wasn't long after we discovered the lithium iron phosphate batteries and started portable power on the channel that we also transitioned over to the Guinness on charge controllers. I just never talked about them. Now I know this seems like an awfully long lead in to the video, but I wanted you to understand how much testing has already gone into the Guinness on charge controllers. For the rest of the video, we're going to talk about what makes them special. And it's those special features which you can use to compare to other charge controllers claiming to be something they're not. Remember, we're approaching this from a MAM portable backpack friendly perspective. The GV5 and GV10 are manufactured in the United States and they come with a five year warranty. They come with an IP40 rating. Maximum power point tracking is calculated 20 times per second. They've got a 98.3% peak efficiency. They have an extremely low current draw. They are FCC, CE and ROHS tested and compliant. They can be ordered with custom voltages to match your own battery configuration and chemistry. And honestly, for the peace of mind you get, they're not that much more expensive. And there we have it. I think now you've got the information you need to make an informed decision about your charge controllers. All right, guys, look, if you like what I'm doing, if you like the content I'm creating, consider leaving me a comment and a thumbs up and sharing this video with someone or someplace where people might enjoy it. Rock and roll, guys. Thanks for watching. Ciao.